Welcome to a Tech X Stories. My name is Benjamin Vidwen Cloquet. I'm CEO and co-founder of EdTechX Holdings and partner at Ibis Capital. EdTechX Stories is a short weekly interaction with CEOs, founders, investors, and innovators shaping and making the future of education and work. So welcome to EdTechX Stories, and I hope you enjoy our next session. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shai Reshev. I'm the president of University of the People, and I founded it in 2009. After spending 20 years in education, I decided that it is time to create a, a tuition-free online university because I believe that higher education should be basic right for all. And that's what I did. And this is University of the People. Hello, Shai. It's lovely to meet you, and I'm really looking forward to um, our conversation and find out a little bit more about you and, and what led you to, to uh, develop University of the People. So let, let's start there. Why University of the People? I spent 20 years of my life in for-profit education. I was in charge of tens of uh, programs for hundreds of thousands of students. And among other things, I started the first online university in Europe, that's where I realized how powerful online learning can be. We had students from all over the world. They can stay at home, keep their job, and still get this great European education. However, I also realized that for most people, it was nothing but a wishful thinking. I ended up selling that business as well as the rest of my business. It was all for profit. And then I decided that uh, I want to continue I want uh, to do something that will have an impact on the world. And then I realized that everything that I did in the for-profit online university is available for free. Open source technology, open educational resources, and uh, the internet culture of people who are willing to share, teach, and learn from each other for free. And I said, wait a second, put it all together and we can have a tuition-free university. And having tens or hundreds even of millions of students around the world who are qualified for higher education and deserve to get it but cannot do it, it's a shame. And I felt that now we have a way to offer them a quality education and that's what we should do and that's what I did and still do. Fantastic. So how did you motivate the, uh, the community to provide the knowledge and, and what was it like at the very beginning? Well, when I first announced the university and I did it in January 2009 in Munich, I knew that I want volunteers to be involved, but I did not know what will be the reaction of, of the world. But the day I announced the university or the day, a day after the New York Times wrote a page about it and the following day, I already had hundreds of emails of professors who said, we believe in, in the idea, we want it to happen and we want to help. And these people, are the volunteers who make this dream come true. Our provost is volunteer, our deans are volunteers, and our instructors, all of them come to us to, as volunteers. And this group of amazing people give their time, their knowledge, their expertise for free for the students from all over the world to get a high quality online education. Fantastic. So what has been the impact? Tell us, I mean, what are some of the, um, some of the headlines of your impacts in that period? Well, we started in 2009. Uh, we received our initial accreditation in 2014, at, at, what, at which point we had 500 students. Since then, we're doubling ourselves. Uh, we have right now uh, 75,000 students, and we are on the way to reach 100,000 students from all over the world. Uh, we offer business administration, computer science, and health science associate and bachelor degree, as well as MBA and master in education. And we have students from 200 countries. Many of them are students who are coming from different kind of backgrounds, survivors of the genocide in Rwanda, the earthquake in Haiti, and a lot of volunteers. We have over 6,000 volunteers, more than any university in the world, uh, we also uh, started a new division in Arabic to help uh, Arab-speaking students, mainly refugees, to be able to make, into, make it into higher education, even if they don't master the English language, which is 
which was until last this summer the only language that we taught. And what do you think is your greatest accomplishment? I mean, there's so many in there, but if you had to pick one, what, what is the thing of which you are most proud in, in what you've achieved with the University of the People? Well, I think that uh, showing that higher education can be accessible, affordable, with the right quality is our major achievement. So having 75,000 students is amazing for the students who uh, who are with us and we're helping them, their families, their communities and their countries. But I think that more than anything else, we build a model. And we show the world that a different model of higher education can exist. And there, is, and there is a way to educate every single person on earth who is qualified for higher education and cannot afford the traditional uh, cost of higher education or live in a place where higher education seats are not available for everyone. So interestingly, uh, you know, we're, we're talking in 2021 after a year when many universities around the world were forced to think about online higher education. What, what, from your view, what is the biggest challenge that traditional universities face when they try to move towards providing online higher education? I think that moving, moving uh, to higher education seems to be an easy thing, but it's not very easy. Uh, when the pandemic, the COVID-19 uh, started, a lot of universities, well, all universities were forced to close their doors. And many of them believe that it's, it's very easy. You just change the classroom into Zoom and that's it. Well, it doesn't work this way. In order for online uh, to succeed, you need to pre-plan the courses and it must be interactive. Students is, are out there alone. It should be interactive. They should feel that uh, they are in a group, even if it's online group, but interactive online um, group of students uh, together. Uh, there should be a lot of support for the students by uh, the instructors and by uh, the administrators. Our, in our uh, faculty are in the classroom every single day and they help students every single day and everything is planned in advance. I think that knowing how to do right um, online learning is something that, that can be done, but you should prepare and learn for it. And uh, some universities did it wrong and they caused a lot of uh, disappointments to the students and to the, to, the, to the professors who taught as well. I think that the lesson is that online is an amazing tool, but should be done right. And it is an amazing tool. And, you know, a, a, the recent survey in the U.S. says that they found that 75% of the students say that they will continue to taking some or, full or, or their full education online because they realize the power of online. It's flexible. It's comfortable. You can choose a, how fast you want to study, when you want to study, when you want to study, where you want to study. And this flexibility is very important for a for the students and they want to adapt it. But as I said, it should be done right. Uh, interesting, interesting. Now, the other, I think, um, very unique thing about University of the People is it's tuition fee free. Um, so how, how do you think this model might um, take us forward when we think about the big challenges of the student debt crisis and the huge amounts that some students borrow in order to fund their higher education? Um, do you see the University of the People model as a scalable global model? Yes, I do see it. It's scalable. A lot of students cannot cannot afford the cost of higher education. Um, it is in some countries, and the US will, will be the best example. It became it become it got to the point that uh, uh, we're talking about trillions of dollars uh, of student debt, which is really unsustainable. Uh, we show a different model how higher education can be not only accessible, affordable. Um, with the right quality, but also sustainable. Um, if we can do it, anyone can do it. Yes, we lean on volunteers, but this is only part of the of the equation. We also use technology to reduce cost. We operate from several parts of the world to reduce cost. We give the, we give the students only the essence that they need in order to succeed. And this is something that other universities can replicate. Giving more to the students is great, if they can afford it, if they cannot afford them, if they cannot afford the cost, give them what do we need, what they need in order to be educated, 
and you can save a lot of cost. I think that other universities can do it. Moreover, I believe that uh, the higher education uh, can change and will be changed in the future uh, to reduce price but still maintain quality. And one idea that I'm uh, pitching for some time by now is to tell universities go one year online for free for the students and do what we do for the students for one year and tell them to come back to campus either for three years or two years, depending on the country where, where they study. But then you save the students the tuition of, of a one third of, or one fourth of the tuition. And you as a university can take more students and put them in the remaining years. So you as a university will not lose any revenues. The students will save costs and students saving costs is good for them and it's also good for the universities because many students cannot afford going to college and if they can go to college it means that uh, we will have less students in in the higher education which means that quite a few colleges and universities will have to close down so reducing the price is the interest of everyone and we are showing the way how it can be done and yes other universities can uh, can do it and we would love to show them how it can be done. Thank you. Can we think a little bit about the future and particularly the future of education in the light of you know huge uh, changes going on in the world and, and the impact of the fourth industrial um, um, the fourth industrial revolution and, and all of those impacts on, on what we need our workers, our professionals, our students to know for the future. What do you see a role for online uh, university education in that respect? And, and if so, uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about how you stay abreast of these things um, within University of the People. I think that, um, yes, yes, online education, uh, first of all, it's here to stay and it present um, a different, a different way of education. Uh, we at University of the People use peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, which is a different pedagogical model. Uh, we use the internet to save time, to save costs, but also to give better service to the students. When you use uh, technology, for example, you can better predict students who are at risk and help them. Uh, you can save their time, but but by realizing what they are good at and what they are less good at and, and concentrate only on the things that they need extra support. So online, you know, can have an, and technology in general and which can be better used in online is a, is a great solution. Uh, saying that, I think that higher education in the future will have many kinds of, uh, of uh, education systems. I think that the online is here to stay, but at the same time, I do not think the traditional education is going to disappear. I think that we will have variety. On the one hand, we'll have uh, the best universities of the, of the world, Harvard, Oxford, will be there forever, and the people who can afford it, afford it will always be there, will always take it no matter what the price will be. On the other hand, will on the other end of the spectrum will be universities such as University of the People, which show, which uh, deliver quality education at a fraction of a price of those top universities. All the other universities will have to find themselves within the spectrum deciding what's unique about them. Why would someone pay $30,000 a year if they can study with us for $1,200 a year? We are tuition free. We are not free. We start, we charge $120 per each end of course exam, which ends up to be uh, $4,800 for a degree or $1,200 per year. Why would you pay more if you don't get more? So other universities should demonstrate what's their uniqueness. You, their uniqueness might be uh, that they specialize. They are the, you know, a university might say, if you want to study ancient Greece, Greek, we are the best university in the world to teach that. If you want to study uh, in your localities, in any part of the world, and study with your neighbors and find a job locally, we are the best university in, in this location. Uh, if you want hybrid education, we offer you hybrid education, half online, half on, uh, half on campus. But there should be a price tag also that is attached to every offering. 
Because if you don't offer something that is unique, well, what's the price tag for something that is not unique? So I think that there will be a lot of models of higher education with a lot of, uh, of price tag attached to each model. And I think it will start in the U.S., but it's true for all over the world, for every country in the world. Higher education will be different everywhere. It might take longer, but it, it, it will happen eventually. Thank you, Shai. You offer a really optimistic uh, picture there, and I really hope that uh, that the higher education community embraces the, this this way forward. Um, we're now going to come to a quick fire round, and I'm going to give you uh, two things to choose between. You have no uh, a, a seconds thinking time, and I want one answer from you. So uh, let's start with the first one: on campus or online? Both. <laughs> if you have to choose one online. <laughs> state school or private school? A state funding school. Degree or skills? Degrees that gives you the skills. <laughs> Affordability or accessibility? Both. I can <laughs> You're failing on this one. And the last one, for profit or non-profit? <laughs> non-profit. Wonderful. And and it's the tradition to end these EdTech X stories, uh, Shai, by asking you to nominate someone who you think should be interviewed next and why. Who would that be? Well, my um, recommendation would be Dr. Shai David. Uh, he's one of the founders of Cultura Inc., um, which actually just went public yesterday. Kaltura uh, offers video cloud platform for educational institutions um, and includes a, a virtual classrooms, lecture capture, webinar, live events, and a study outreach. Uh, Dr. David is a leading figure in uh, online education technologies, and, and I believe that... Uh, uh, technologies is the future of higher education. I think that he will be a very good person to interview. Thank you so much, um, Shai Reshef. Thank you. It was a pleasure.